you smelt the hype. It all went down. You saw the previous video. You've seen many videos on the new devices from Samsung S10, S10 Plus. They're out there and they're uh, they're kind of interesting to be honest. But something that struck me just using these things a little more extensively over the course of the day here is how different Samsung software is now via this brand new One UI that they're using. Of course, I have a long history with Samsung skins on top of the Android operating system. What used to be called TouchWiz at one time, I was never a big fan of it. It always felt kinda bolted on, kinda half-baked. This is, is, it's a breath of fresh air. I felt the need to jump back on here. Call me crazy, but I'm starting to think this might actually be the first skin that I wanna use, maybe even more than stock. I, am I saying this right now? Is this me? I've never said that before, but let me give you a quick rundown, okay? So the best part of this One UI is when you swipe down from the top. So that looks pretty normal, but when you pull down the second time, that's where things get really exciting. You pull down and pull down again, and everything that you would normally have to reach up to access is right here for one-handed use. Now that's kind of nice to have on the S10, but it's even nicer to have on the S10 Plus which, let's be honest, that's a pretty big phone. They went to the drawing board here and they're like, well, what should it be like for one-handed use? And that's the simplest, best implementation I've ever seen. Secondary swipe to bring everything back down into reach. If you do head into the settings, you'll see it exists even within there. Now, you're probably noticing another thing, which I really like about One UI, which is, of course, this really cool looking dark mode on the right hand side. So this is the S10 Plus over here. I've already enabled dark mode on there. They're calling it night mode, as you can see right here. And I'm a big fan of these in general. If you're using your device in a, in a dark environment, it's, it's far less obnoxious. You're not getting beamed with nearly as much light. It's just more comfortable to use and it's covert. Take a look at it. Now, another thing that's happened here is in, in terms of the icons and whatnot, normally I'm a bit critical because the icons, they're a bit cartoonish, not necessarily my style, but I'm starting to understand that having these larger icons also lends itself to one-handed usage. In this particular case, you don't need to be as precise and you can just go ahead and reach more of it. The fingerprint scanner and the face unlock. Samsung is doing something very special with the fingerprint scanner in these two devices. These guys are using ultrasonic. They're actually using sound waves to judge the distance between ridges on your fingerprint. It's, it's kind of amazing when you first hear it. Now, in practice, it doesn't work all that differently from any other in-display fingerprint scanner. I mean, the speed I was trying to check, is it faster, slower than the optical-based ones? I think it's about the same. But the advantage of this particular technology is it's tougher to fool because it does actually look for blood flow. That's like the superhero villain scenario. They chop your finger off, get access, destroy the world, and so on. Not gonna happen on this particular device, Kirk. Okay, you can, you can rest easy. All right, if they chop your finger off, it's no good to them. There's no blood flow, ultrasonic. Also, supposedly, this is gonna function better with a fingerprint that might be a little bit dirty or wet, whatever it, I don't know what you're involved in, all right? I don't, I'm not telling you how to live your life or what you're doing with your fingertips, all right? I stay out of that department. But if, uh, if you're in a, a certain kind of business, maybe this is better. If your hands are dirty, if your fingertips it works, it supposedly works better. It does feel a bit slower when you're coming straight from here. You see what I mean with the black screen? But if you do hit the, the switch here, you get a better sense for how fast it is. I'd say it's comparable to the optical scanners, but it does seem like slightly more robust tech. Now let's go ahead and register the face unlock as well. I'd like to show you guys how that works. So it does give you a warning on the facial recognition. It tells you that this is not completely secure. It's not the most secure form of authentication, but I do wanna show you the setup process here on the regular S10 so you see what you're in for. 
It's very fast. One thing that kind of bugs me, it's a two-step thing similar to the iPhone. I'll show you what I mean here, okay? Hit the button, it sees you, phone is unlocked, and then you swipe up. On the OnePlus device, for example, which just has a, you know, strictly has a photo-based face unlock, you just hit the switch, boom, it unlocks immediately. Now, some people may like that, some people maybe not, maybe it's easier to hack. One thing I do like about this implementation, if you look up here, you look closely at the front-facing camera cutout, there's that cool animation that pops up again, letting you know it was activated, it worked, and then you go ahead and unlock. Otherwise, if it doesn't see you, you hit it with the thumbprint and you're in. It's usable, it works, and you have the face unlock option, which is also baked in there. Another cool thing in here, they have added the wireless power share. I think this is a, it's a fun feature. Wireless power share, tap that on. Place this device against any other device that has cheat compatibility and like, check this out, okay? So we're gonna line them up. Kirk, keep an eye up there on the icon. Okay, ready? I'm gonna go ahead and initiate it. And just like that, you get the you get the sound notification as well as the visual notification. You're now charging up this device from this device. Now there is another glaring user interface slash hardware aspect to this device that I know a lot of people are gonna have questions about. That is of course the dedicated Bixby button. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah, I know we talked about in the past. It, uh, it strikes fear into tech fans around the globe. I know I have nightmares about the Bixby button and, and what it really wants to do to me. Anyhow, apparently, 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 does this make sense in this context? Not really. Apparently, in a software update, that button is going to become completely configurable by you. It will be able to launch any application that you like. Imagine that, a dedicated button that you get to configure. I think it's a good move on Samsung's behalf and I'm starting to see a lot of things that I kind of like about this device. It's crazy, I can't believe I'm saying it, but to be honest, I just, I played with the One UI situation just for a moment. You throw on the dark mode, you get the one-handed functionality, it's quick. You can go in there and actually turn down animations now. Yeah, Samsung's letting you do that. This is the same company that gave you TouchWiz. What are we doing here? Are we looking to them now for software iteration, for software improvement? It's kind of amazing, and I think it's gonna be one of the differentiating factors with this particular device. As I said in the last video, I'm gonna use this a little bit more, but I felt the need to just do a little highlight here on the One UI. Some promising things happening with this device outside of strictly the hardware. The software seems to have taken a step in the right direction, and that's a good thing for tech fans around the world. Also, once the Bixby thing happens, you could be done with those nightmares. You can stop. <laughs> Even Otis is having Bixby nightmares. They're gonna, they're gonna finally, they're gonna finally let us remap the Bixby button. It can launch any app that we want. This button here, that, look, 